Try and picture a van-based mid-sized people carrier. Bet you weren't imagining anything quite as nice as this. The third generation version of Citroen's much more civilised people carrying Berlingo has been further distanced from the original Mark 1 model's basic commercial routes. With smarter styling, a choice of body shapes, more equipment and an efficient set of PureTech petrol and blue HDI diesel engines, this value for money 5 or 7 seater is now a vehicle that demands to be taken very seriously indeed. If you're after a budget family carry-all, it's well worth a look. Today we're usually told by the motor industry that the ideal automotive partner for families with active lifestyles is some sort of SUV. The Citroen brand can meet the needs of crossover customers too, but it's been doing so for far longer with this model, the people carrying version of its Berlingo. For a busy family, this car claims to deliver more of what you need and less of what you don't, especially in this hugely improved third generation guys. People carrying Berlingos have been around since 1996 and until the launch of this Mark III model, they were differentiated from the van version of this design by multi-space badging. In 2018 though, with 1.7 million multi-space sales on the board, Citroen decided to simplify this contender's model name as part of only the second redesign in this MPV's production history. More significantly, the brand moved to considerably broaden this car's appeal with a choice of body shapes, less LCV-like styling, upgraded engines, and a raft of cutting-edge media and safety kit. As a result, it's certainly more difficult to now buy a mid-sized SUV or more car-like MPV in preference to a model like this and claim you've done so for any reason other than shape snobbery. Of course, the Berlingo isn't the only LCV-derived mid-sized people-carrying model competing in what its maker rather amusingly refers to as the Ludo Space segment. In fact, one of this Citroen's biggest problems is that it shares all the fundamentals of its design, including all its engineering, with two PSA Group stablemate models, the Peugeot Rifter and the Vauxhall Combo Life. Ford's Toneo Connect, Volkswagen's Caddy Life and the Fiat Doblo also target customers in this sector, with practically orientated packages. Citroen, though, was the brand that invented this class of car, and with this design, they reckon they've perfected it. The availability of a long wheelbase body style for the first time with this third generation model allows the company to properly target the seven seat part of the mid sized MPV segment more effectively than ever before. And whatever your choice of body shape, this Gallic maker claims that the right kind of buyer will find the combination of value, practicality, and efficiency that's an offer here difficult to resist. Are they right? Let's find out. A favourite Citroen marketing strap line insists that its cars are inspired by you. In this particular case though, we'd like to suggest that the inspiration comes from a quite different source. In the post-war era, the brand established its reputation with the iconic 2CV, a car that above all else was simple, spacious and affordable. You could transport almost anything sensibly sized in one, uh, you could subject the interior to a frightful lathering before hosing it down, oh and you could fix the thing with a rusty hammer. It was delightfully unpretentious and it dispatched tarmac tears with disdain. All sound familiar? Well, if you have a penchant for people carrying Berlingos, it might well be. Certainly, if you were going to sit down from scratch and design a 2CV successor for the modern era without the kind of rose-tinted retro references that Citroen has little time for, there's a good argument for suggesting that it should look and drive something like this third-generation Berlingo. Now let's start with the best thing about it, the suspension. Van-based models like this one are usually defined by a very firm standard of ride, and that's courtesy of the stiff damping which is needed for heavy loads. On that basis, this affordable French people carrier could hardly be described as particularly van-like because the soft, absorbent ride quality with its endearing strolling motion is one of the very best things about the driving experience it offers. Now, this is helped by the installation of car-derived underpinnings, 
uh, which at the front are from the EMP2 platform that PSA Group brands use for all their mid-sized models. But it's mainly down to Citroen's know-how in this area that makes this car brilliant at dealing with uh, everything from speed humps to road ripples and higher frequency bumps. Now that's an important thing to consider. After all, we reckon that aside from safety and practicality, ride quality needs to be one of your key criteria when making a decision on an MPV style vehicle. Too firm and you'll never manage to get the kids off to sleep on a long journey. Too soft, and of course, they'll get car sick on the corners. Now this Gallic People Carrier strikes a good balance because it is a little softer than you might expect in what the engineers call compression and rebound. So in other words, uh, over the humps, but uh, it's a bit firmer than you'd think in terms of roll, in other words, around the bends. For what is quite a tall, high vehicle, there's certainly none of the tippy feeling through the turns that characterized earlier versions of this design, and that's helped in no small part by beefy anti-roll bars. So this car can be relaxing to drive, even if, somewhat understandably, it can't be a rewarding steer in the way that, say, a car like MPV can, such as Ford C-Max. Although things would be better in this regard were it not for the rather vague steering. Now, you appreciate the lightness of that steering through town, though. Ultimately, uh, we'd have to ask just how important dynamic attributes are in a vehicle of this kind. Uh, you'd be the judge, but we'd suggest that things such as refinement are of greater importance. Now, how does that compare against an ordinary car-like MPV, like, say, a Renault Scenic or Citroen's own C4 Space Tourer? Well, again, not too badly, we'd suggest. The interior space that you get in one of these is greater, of course, so you will get a little more noise reverberating off the walls, and at highway speeds, there is a bit of wind roar from the bulky mirrors. Effort has been put in, though, to reduce the audible impact of the two more significant contributors to noise, uh, the engine and the tyres. And as a result, the general din that used to afflict previous versions of this model has here been reduced to a manageable level. And that's just as well, because a decent level of refinement has a big effect on how fresh you'll feel at the end of a journey. You'll be wanting to know about engines and if perhaps you were familiar with this car's predecessor, whether this third generation Berlingo can offer you some decent petrol powered options this time around to suit the current zeitgeist. Uh, the previous Mark II model struggled in this regard, but this car doesn't. Uh, it's fitted out with the PSA Group's excellent three cylinder 1.2 litre PureTech turbo unit. Now most bars will opt for this power plant in a 110 horsepower form where it's mated to a six speed manual gearbox and makes 62 miles an hour from rest in 11.5 seconds en route to a maximum of 109 miles an hour. Pulling power is strong even from low revs and there's plenty of punch in the mid-range although there's little point in revving it out. The other petrol alternative is a 130 HP version of that engine but if you go for that you have to have it with the brand's latest E88 eight-speed automatic gearbox. Now this is a proper torque converter auto this time around. Uh, the old E86 auto option that you got in some versions of the previous Berlingo was merely a robotized manual. Shifts are now far more smooth as a result uh, and auto buyers also get steering wheel paddle shifters although uh, we do doubt that they'll feel like one of Citroen's rally drivers at any point. The French brand still expects, though, the majority of Berlingo buyers will want a diesel and, as usual, it offers its choice of blue HDI units, this time of 1.5 litres in capacity, developing uh, 75, 100 or, as in this case, 130 horsepower. The base blue HDI 75 variant is a distinctly leisurely thing, taking a yawning 16.5 seconds to reach 62 from rest on the way to just 95 miles an hour, which helps to explain why almost all customers opt for one of the two perkier Berlingo diesel models, possibly the 100 HP version which makes 62 miles an hour in 12.3 seconds on the way to 109 miles an hour. At the top of the range, the punchy 130 horsepower engine uh, that we're trying here is the only diesel unit that's mated to a manual gearbox with six speeds rather than five, and it's the power plant to choose if you plan on doing any towing or uh, if you just like a car that makes mincemeat of typical overtaking maneuvers on the motorway. Uh, the 300 newton meter torque output offers a plump wave of pulling power, which allows the manual version of this variant to tug along up to one and a half tons, and it really 
actually surges nicely through the gears, getting to 62 in 10.3 seconds, on the way to a still rather modest top speed of 116 miles an hour. Still, this vehicle does have quite a bit of frontal area to present to the Airstream. Uh, we should additionally mention that Blue HDI 130 buyers also get the alternative of that E88 automatic gearbox, and that might be a good option for parents who want, well, just one less thing to worry about as they ferry a noisy family around. Other things to note, well, the manual gearbox doesn't like to be hurried with a rather long throw between ratios, but then this isn't any kind of sports car. More importantly, all-round visibility is very good, with particular credit going to the enormous mirrors. Along with a relatively tight 10.8 meter turning circle and the vast glass area, it all makes town driving much easier than you might expect. As for the whole go anywhere, do anything lifestyle vibe that this car's marketed with, well, it's as well not to get too carried away by that or the various optional XDR SUV like styling cues. The only concession that Citroen offers for wild weather or even wilder terrain is to make available its optional advanced grip control system. This is designed to help you with tarmac traction in icy weather conditions or maybe perhaps in muddy car parks. Now, it works with the standard ESB stability control control system to break a wildly spinning front wheel and transfer torque to the tyre with the most traction. Control of this setup is via a rotary knob by the gear stick, which offers dedicated modes to deal with either snow, mud or sand, or indeed to turn all the electronics off completely, as you might want to do, uh, for example, when you're braking on gravel or slush, when locked up wheels can actually build up a little buffer in front of them to help you to stop. This is all enough to enable negotiation of some surprisingly sticky situations. The stickiest situation a typical Berlingo buyer will come across, though, is likely to be an awkwardly shaped parking space, although even that will be easy to negotiate if you fitted your car out with options like the 180 degree colour reversing camera or the park assist pack. Uh, you can even specify high tech features like a head up display. That does seem a bit odd to be using in a van based MPV, though, and adaptive cruise control, too and active safety brake, autonomous braking, that's now standard fit. Uh, the Berlingo, you see, has educated itself and got itself a little more sophisticated. Fortunately, though, its core values haven't been compromised in the process, so thank goodness for that. It's probable that the average Berlingo owner doesn't have much time for the stylized SUVs that family buyers seem to love so much at present. If he or she were to be typically French, you can imagine such a person taking one look at a fashion-led crossover and then dismissing it with a puzzled Gallic shrug as they turned away in a waft of Gaulois smoke. You buy a family car to suit family needs, mais non? So why would it not be proudly bluff and squarical, just like this one? Now it's easy to buy into that principle in theory and then be quickly put off by it, by the grim, grey, utilitarian demeanour that tends to typically characterise LCV-derived models in this segment. After all, no one really wants to be pigeonholed as a delivery driver on the school run. With this one though, we don't think you will be. The Berlingo is just as boxy as ever it was, but this third generation version has got a bit of attitude this time around. Now this isn't the first time that a brand in what Citroen calls the Ludo Space segment has tried to make a mid-sized van-based MPV interesting. In our view, though, it's the first time anyone's got anywhere close to succeeding in that quest. The adoption of this French maker's two-tier front lighting signature helps here, blending surprisingly well into the angular shape. Plus, this Mark III model adopts a more forward-set windscreen and this higher, shorter front end, which, as you can see, features trendy coloured rings around the fog light apertures. Now, if you really must have a crossover queue, then if you pay extra for the optional XTR pack, this silvered lower scuff plate provides it. 
Move around to the side and there's less of a van with windows feel with this third generation model, uh, primarily thanks to little touches like the black finishing applied to the A and the C pillars and the addition of these distinctive air bump lower flanking panels. Now Citroen's either abandoning or downgrading these in some of its other models, but here they make a prominent color coded appearance. Their practical purpose is to uh, more effectively guard against car parking scrapes. Now with previous Berlinger models, uh, it didn't really matter if the bodywork was bashed about a bit, but you might feel a bit more protective about this one, uh, especially if you pay a bit extra on this top spec flare model, which uh, comes complete with gloss black roof rails and smart alloy wheels. They're normally 16 inches in size, but here they've been upgraded to 17 inch rims. This time around in this segment, Citroen's offering buyers not only this 4.4 meter M designated standard body shape, but also an alternative 4.75 meter XL body style, which is intended to deliver a lot more space for those wanting to get their Berlingo fitted out with a third seating row. At the back, uh, it is pretty van-like, although Citroen's tried to dilute that feeling by adding in smartly illuminating LED rear tail lamps and with that optional XTR pack fit, you also get this uh, uh, rather unconvincing silvered lowered skid plate strip. Uh, as with previous Berlingo MPVs, they've specified this model with a one-piece tailgate rather than with the asymmetrically opening twin rear doors that you get on the commercial van version of this design. To be frank, twin doors would be much easier to use. This massive tailgate not only takes a bit of strength to lift, but it also needs quite a lot of space to properly complete its raising motion, uh, with the result that in, say, a tight multi-storey car park, you might not be able to access it at all. Now, aware of that, Citroen offers a useful opening rear glass section, but unfortunately only fits this element of design to the top spec flare variant like this one. Uh, for us, this is a fundamental feature that really ought to be fitted to the base version too, or at least be optional on that variant. To be fair, we should point out that when you do get the full tailgate open, uh, there is a benefit to it being so big, namely that it provides quite an effective canopy under which you can corral your kids if, say, you're dropping them off at school in the rain and they're getting all their bits and pieces together from the boot. Citroen also says it's one of the things that makes owners go off and do things like tailgate picnics. That sounds more like a French thing to us. But we're getting off the point here and ignoring one of the key things, namely uh, uh, the enormous amount of luggage room on offer. Let's take a closer look at the boot space. Uh, whatever way you specify this Berlingo, the cargo area will be vast. Just how vast that area is, we'll tell you now. So notebooks at the ready. Now in this standard M length model with both seating rows in place, there's a thousand millimeters of loading area length. And with the rear parcel shelf in its top position, a total of 775 liters of of capacities available and that rises to 1,355 if you load to the roof. For the long wheelbase model with its third row seating taking up most of the space in that boot area, there's nonetheless still potentially up to 566 mils of loading area length depending on seat positioning and that's enough for a decently sized supermarket shop. Uh, now in a long wheelbase model like that with the third row seating removed, there's a huge 1,350 mils of load area length so you could probably get all all the kids' bikes in. And the capacity figures uh, would be 1,050 litres up to window level and 1,900 litres up to the roof. This boot area is square and very usable, and if it really isn't big enough and you have a car full of passengers, it's also worth knowing you can take up to 100 kilos strapped to the roof. Getting bulky stuff in is aided by this low loading lip and useful touches like elasticated straps here on the left and a storage compartment over here on the right. Now a nice touch is a way that this parcel shelf uh, can be positioned at two heights and can also take a reasonable amount of weight, enough so you could uh, put the family dog on top of it with your shopping safe below. Uh, there is access to a 12 volt socket and there are four stout tie down points also provided of course. Now if you have specified the optional modgy top roof structure, that's only offered on M length models, you also get this brilliant aircraft style um, uh, drop down ceiling compartment. 
Where van-based mid-sized MPVs like this one totally come into their own from a luggage carrying perspective though, is when you're able to dispense with the uh, second seating row and use a model of this sort a bit like a removals van. Folding down the back seat in more affordable Berlingo derivatives is via the usual 60-40 split rear backrest arrangement that you'll be used to. In a top spec flare derivative like this one though, you get three individual rear seats that can be retracted by a neat magic flat release catch in the boot. However you flatten the second row seating in a standard M length model, there'll be 1,880 mils of loading length freed up once you've done it, or as much as 2,700 mils if you've avoided entry level trim and you got yourself a Berlingo variant offering you the chance to fold forward the front passenger seat. Uh, for the longer XL body style, the respective figures would be 2,230 mils and 3,050 mils. Uh, the latter figure is long enough to enable the interior of this car to swallow something like a kayak. For completion, we'll also give you the cubic luggage capacity figures across the Berlingo range with both front seats fully in place but with all the others in the cabin folded. Now in that configuration, this standard M-shaped model could offer you 1,414 litres of room up to window level or 3,000 litres if you were loading up to the ceiling. For the long wheelbase XL model with the same layout, the figures would be 1,672 litres and 3,500 litres. In both cases, there'd be 500 litres more capacity freed up if you were going to fold forward the front passenger seat. But even without doing that, uh, there's substantially more space on offer here than you get from a more conventional car-based MPV from the next class up. Uh, to give you a bit of perspective on that, uh, let's tell you that, say, a Ford Galaxy with second and third row seating folded would give you up to 2,339 litres of space. Time to take a seat at the wheel. Now, previously, the front cabin in this model really did feel pretty much like what it was, a van masquerading as a car. This time around, though, uh, the effect feels far more convincing, and that's thanks primarily to the addition of this 8-inch capacitive center dash infotainment screen, and that's a standard feature that's fitted right across the range. Uh, the fascia surfacing is now far less obviously of the wipe clean variety, and if you buy in further up the range, there are even a few uh, overtly stylized touches. Uh, this stitch strap on the glove block lid, for example, and the Rosada green finishing for the upper part of the dash, which comes with this uh, particular car's optional XTR pack. Now that screen we mentioned offers easy access to DAB radio stations, hands-free phone connectivity and media streaming via Bluetooth or a USB connection. Plus there's smartphone mirroring via the Android Auto or Apple CarPlay systems. Uh, if you opt for this top spec flare trim, you get voice recognition and connected 3D navigation too. Plus this screen can create in the car a Wi-Fi hotspot and provide you with an internet browser. There's also the option of a Citroen Connected Apps package, and that will open up access to a whole range of informational features. Now with these in place, uh, your Berlingo will be able to do things like warn you about traffic jams, locate a fuel station, uh, find you a car park, and locate you a restaurant. Uh, there are also apps that will allow you to check the weather, uh, allow you to search for tourist locations, find entertainment venues, even search for a trader via a yellow pages function. Now what we are glad this screen can't do is operate the ventilation controls. Now you have to have that functionality on Citroen's similarly sized C4 Space Tourer models and that's irritating when, uh, well let's say you're trying to follow a sat-nav map or switch radio stations and at the same time you want to uh, adjust the cabin climate. Here the ventilation buttons thankfully remain separate and are located further down the centre stack. We've saved arguably the best bit though until last, cabin practicality. If you were to add up all the capacity of the 28 different nooks and crannies available within the interior of this Berlingo, you'd arrive at a figure of 186 litres. That's about as much as you get in the entire boot of a city car. Perhaps the cleverest element is this top box glove compartment, vastly increased in size by virtue of the fact that the front passenger airbag that would normally restrict this stowage area size has been moved up into the ceiling. Uh, now 
Now this glove box incorporates a USB port and an aux in socket, uh, but it's a pity it can't be cooled for the storage of things like uh, cans of drink and chocolate. Um, now, unfortunately, uh, this slippery, shallow, narrow, mid-level tray just below the glove box lid is pretty much useless. And we're also disappointed by the way that the, uh, the open storage area which lies below is reduced in size on right-hand drive models by the need to accommodate a bulky fuse box. Uh, there are decently sized door pockets and on this top spec model there's a storage recess beneath the front passenger seat and there's also a storage drawer beneath the driver's seat, although uh, that doesn't actually slide out. Now unfortunately the central stowage bin between the seats that uh, most versions of this model's Peugeot Rifter cousin supply as standard costs extra here and you can only have that if you forked out for a dual zone climate control. What else? Well, there ought to be an overhead storage area for your sunglasses. And if you specified this vast glass modutop roof structure, more on that in a moment, uh, you won't get the useful overhead shelf that would otherwise feature above the dash. Uh, on the plus side though, there is a useful cubby in front of the gear stick, uh, which can accommodate an optional wireless charging mat. And uh, smaller items can be stashed behind the center dash infotainment screen. And the lower frame of the uh, screen incorporates a further USB port. Uh, there's a little coin holder just above the electric parking brake, uh, which most models now have, and there are little ticket clips on the sun visors. Cup holders, uh, well, this model's LCV roots are further betrayed by the way that these um, are mounted at either end of the top of the dash. And on that subject, uh, we're really not quite sure what this little circular indentation near the gear stick here is for. Uh, a tiny bottle of pastis maybe? As for other things that you might want to know, well, here's what we've found in our time with this car. Uh, it's easy to find a comfortable driving position, aided by plenty of adjustment from the height adjustable seat and the restyled, more squarical three-spoke wheel. As ever, all the controls are clearly marked and fall easily to hand, especially the gear lever, which sprouts neatly into your palm from the dash. Uh, the instrument dials that you view through the wheel are clear and smart, and they come separated by an informational screen which can uh, display trip computer functions, um, a braking acceleration graphic and speed limit signs. The electric window switches are this time around mounted properly on the doors rather than uh, in the middle of the fascia as they were on the second generation Berlingo. Now all round visibility that's fine uh, thanks to this vast glass house although rear parking sensors do come fitted as standard just in case. Build quality, yep, that seems reasonable, although some of the interior surfaces look as though they might scratch easily if you happen to have unruly kids. And talking of children, then uh, we'd really recommend the optional family pack, which gives you an extra rear view mirror so you can more easily see what your kids are getting up to behind you as you drive. Enough on what the front of the cabin's like, let's take a seat in the second row. Now, both short and long wheelbase Berlingo models offer access to this part of the car via these sliding side doors. Uh, these are so much more practical than the conventionally opening items that kids so often use to dent and scratch adjoining vehicles in tightly packed car parks. Now the sliding doors are rather heavy to close from the inside and this format means you can't have door pockets either. Still, on the plus side, this second row offers enough space to suit a wide variety of passenger shapes and sizes. Uh, there are vast standards of headroom and because the centre transmission tunnel is virtually non-existent, it's straightforward to accommodate three fully sized adults if need be. Uh, now, if you're able to stretch to this particular car's top spec flare trim, you get the three individual rear seats that really ought to be optional with entry level spec. Now these three chairs don't slide or recline in the way that you'd hope they might in this M body style but they do slide on the XL version and you can fold down uh, this middle one in a way that creates a central table for the outer two passengers but the front seats have to be quite far forward to do that.
Now, an optional feature limited to top flare spec models, but only available with the standard M body shape, is the Modutop panoramic glass roof package that Citroen's so proud of. As you can see, we've got that fitted here. Uh, now, this is a wide one section panoramic glass top covered by an electric blind and which features a central floating style translucent panel, which is edged with LED ambience lighting and which incorporates various storage compartments, which all together have a capacity of up to 92 litres. Uh, these two back compartments here are flanked by curious little uh, corner storage areas and overhead reading lights are built into the rear of this central panel. Even without this premium feature though, second row passengers in a Berlingo are pretty well looked after. Children will appreciate the fact that uh, provided you avoid entry level trim, these side windows have proper electric up and down opening rather than the kind of uh, fixed edged hinged arrangement that smaller folk tend to object to. Um, you'll find two floor compartments hidden beneath this practical rubber matting and how these stowage areas are designed to minimize kids clutter or to keep uh, your valuables away from prying eyes. Uh, the cup holders which would service third row folk in the long wheelbase version of this car are retained for this five seat M body style. Uh, you do have to reach over your shoulder to get at those and also to get at the 12 volt socket which is provided as part of the cup holder molding on the left side here. Uh, this top spec model features aircraft style seat back tables with cup holder points and if you specify the optional central storage bin uh, between the front seats there then the back of that will incorporate vents, fan controls and a USB socket. And that's about it, assuming you've gone for the kind of standard length five seat short wheelbase Berlingo that we've been testing here. Uh, were we to be buying this Citroen though, we'd be tempted to pay the small amount extra for the alternative XL body style with its two extra boot mounted chairs. Now the fact that these sit within a spacious 4.75 meter body shape this time around makes all the difference. In the old second generation Berlingo model, the sixth and seventh seats where they were fitted were very much for kids only. Here they can, at a pinch, be quite comfortably used by adults on short to medium length journeys. It's just another example of this Citroen's flexibility. Time for a bit of guidance through the Berlingo MPV model lineup and it's priced in the 19 to 26,000 pound bracket and it's a bit wider and more complicated than that of the previous generation model. That's because this time around there are two body shapes, a 4.4 meter long M variant with five seats, which is what we have here, and a 4.75 meter long XL version with seven seats and that's available for a 1700 pound premium. Now in certain parts of the continent, they have a penchant for really basic hair shirt versions of cars like this. So in France, for example, you can get a base touch spec version of this car. Here, the range starts from the next level up, feel, although if you want to get all the clever practicality features that really make this car, you'll need to pay the 2,250 pound premium, which Citroen demands for the top spec flare trim level that we're trying here. As for engines, well, the least expensive way into this Citroen is to opt for the lowest powered 1.5 litre Blue HDI 75 diesel, but that's going to struggle a bit with a fully loaded Berlingo at higher speeds or on sharper inclines. Uh, we found the alternative three cylinder 1.2 litre PureTech 110 petrol unit, which costs only fractionally more to be slightly more usable. If you do prefer petrol power, then you might want to know that another couple of thousand gets you that little PureTech power plant in its gutsier 130. 30 horsepower state of tune, although you can only have that engine paired with Citroen's E88 automatic gearbox. In our estimation though, you'd ideally want to bypass all three of those power plants and opt instead for either of the two perkier diesels, which from launch were pitched from just under the £20,000 price point and which will better suit a wider variety of travelling scenarios. Uh, there's a choice of either a 100 HP variant of the 1.5 litre Blue HDI unit allied with five-speed manual transmission or for just over £1,100 more, a 130 horsepower version of that black pump fueled engine 
engine, which uses either a slicker six-speed manual box, that's what we've got here, or for £1,400 more, an eight-speed E88 automatic transmission. On to the value proposition all of that represents. Now, the most obvious rivals to pitch against this Citroen are the two that share its engineering, platform and power plants, namely the Vauxhall Combo Life, that costs around £500 more, and the Peugeot Rifter, which costs about £800 more. It is worth pointing out, though, that uh, baseline Berlingo trim approximately equates to the mid-level spec of either the Vauxhall or the Peugeot, uh, which means that this Citroen's price advantage over those to design stable mates is actually much greater than the numbers just quoted suggest. Now Citroen hopes that this will give it an advantage here. Of course, there are other options in the mid-sized van-based MPV segment that you could consider. A search for sheer space and value in a vehicle of this sort might lead you towards Fiat's Doblo. That undercuts this Citroen by around £2,500 in diesel form, but it's a much more utilitarian looking thing, both inside and out. That Italian model undercuts the Berlingo by even more in its petrol guise, but if you are attracted by that, you'll need to bear in mind that the only green pump fueled engine available in the Fiat is an old tech 1.4 litre power plant which is less powerful and considerably less efficient than anything this Citroen can offer. Your other two options in this segment are more up to date. Uh, the Ford Tonneo Connect and Grand Tonneo Connect models cost about the same as equivalent versions of the Citroen in their volume diesel forms, but they are slightly less efficient and economical and they're quite a bit more van-like. Now, the same comments also apply to the other choice that you could make in this segment, and that's Volkswagen's Caddy Life. Now, this Wolfsburg model costs around about the same as the Citroen, but do bear in mind that the entry-level petrol version is a much less sprightly thing than the entry-level petrol-powered Berlingo. Of course, this Citroen's proposition looks even better if you're comparing against conventional car-like MPVs. A Berlingo with the Blue HDI 130 diesel engine we're trying here would save you about £3,000 on an equivalent Citroen C4 Space Tourer with exactly the same engine. Uh, with the same Berlingo variant, you'd also save pretty much the same amount over the cost of the cheapest diesel Renault Scenic or Ford C-Max. If having considered all of this, you conclude it is a Berlingo that your family really needs, uh, then you're going to need to know exactly what's included in the standard spec. So let's move on to take a look at that now. And let's start with the fact that even with a base field trimmed variant, you do get a few significant essentials. Air conditioning, that's pretty important with all this glass, and glazed sliding side doors to guard against car parking dents. In addition, there are also welcome inclusions like auto headlights that also have a follow me home function to guide you to your front door at night, uh, front fog lamps which turn with the bends, magic wash, auto windscreen wipers, uh, electric heated mirrors and remote central locking which automatically activates when you drive off. Um, there's also a bit more exterior style than base trim versions of cars like this one usually provide. Uh, for instance, body coloured finishing for the door mirrors, the bumpers uh, and the mirrors. Plus signature daytime running light strips sit above the halogen headlamps. And the flanks feature Citroen's unique air bump lower panelling with the front capsule framed in white trimming which is also extended to the front fog lights around. Inside, right across the range, you'll find a height adjustable driver's seat, a trip computer, a full width front overhead storage shelf, a leather stitch steering wheel and cruise control with a speed limiter, which will help to preserve your license through roadworks or urban areas. Plus you get practical features like a dual height luggage cover and underfloor storage compartments for row two passengers. Laudably, a spare wheel is standard too, as is a safety pack, including some key camera driven features that we'll cover off in a minute. Uh, there's also a decent six-speaker DAB audio system with steering wheel controls and Bluetooth connectivity, along with USB and 12-volt sockets. This setup additionally comes with an 8-inch capacitive center dash touchscreen display incorporating Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. And that's a feature that you won't find on the pricier base trim versions of this model's Peugeot Rifter and Vauxhall Combo Life design stablemates. 
Ideally though, you'd find the extra cash for the top Berlingo flare model like the one we're trying here. Now this is a spec you'll need if you want some of the really clever interior features that this Berlingo can provide. The three individual rear seats, for example, rather than the ordinary bench. These chairs can be retracted using magic flat levers in the boot. And talking of the boot, in a flare model, you'll be able to access that more easily thanks to an opening rear tailgate glass panel. Plus, there's the extra convenience of things like a fold flat front passenger seat, a plus for the driver's chair, lumbar support, an armrest and under seat storage. In addition, second row occupants are better looked after at this level too, with aircraft style seat back tables and electric windows. It's a pity that all these features can't individually be added into the lesser feel spec as options. Outside, flare variants are identifiable by their 16-inch starlit alloy wheels, roof bars and rear privacy glass. Rear parking sensors make the team sheet too. Inside, flare spec gives you dual zone climate control, keyless entry and an electric parking brake. As you'd expect, the infotainment system is upgraded for flare buyers too, with voice recognition and a connected nav navigation system, including a three-year subscription to TomTom Tom Live Updates. On to options. Now, perhaps the most interesting one is the advanced grip control setup, which is available on all models and which uses the ESB stability system to maximize front wheel traction in slippery conditions. We'd also want to look at a rear restraining net to keep luggage in place in the boot, possibly a tow bar, probably an alarm, and also maybe the family pack, which gives you blinds on the rear side windows and the additional rear child mirror that lets you keep a close eye on what those little horrors are getting up to in the back. Across the range you'll almost certainly be paying your Citroen dealer more for your choice of paint shade because the only standard colour is solid polar white. We've got metallic soft sand here. Other extras generally only tend to be available if you avoid entry-level field trim. Uh, the most interesting option here is the Modutop panoramic roof we've been trying as part of this test with a Cielo glass top, powered blind, extra overhead storage and classy illuminated central bar. Now this is only available if you specify the standard M body style we have today. On this particular model, we've also got the extra cost XTR pack, which gives you larger 17 inch spin alloy wheels, Rosada green dashboard trimming, lime green upholstery, uh, door mirrors and roof bars finished in gloss black, front and rear scuff plates and orange trimming for the front fog light surrounds and the front air bump surrounds. Other options available to flare spec buyers include things like a head-up display, a keyless entry, a smartphone charging plate and a 230 volt socket. Front parking sensors are also available while more sophisticated parking aids are bundled up in packs with various safety features. We'll get to those in a minute. Uh, there's also the option of dual zone climate control and if you order that, your dealer will also offer you the chance to specify an extra cost high console storage box that fits between the front seats, on the back of which second row folk can access air vents, a fan controller and a USB port. On to safety. With its van-based mid-sized MPV model line, it's taken the French maker some time to get up to speed in this regard. Something as basic as ESP stability control, for example, was only standardized on Citroens of this sort as recently as 2016, and base versions of the old Berlingo never featured side or curtain airbags. If this model was going to be seen as credibly car-like, the brand was aware that a good deal more effort was going to be needed. Hence, the standardization of the company's active safety brake setup. Now this is one of those autonomous braking systems which, as you drive at urban speeds, scans the road ahead in search of potential accident hazards. If one's detected, then you'll be warned. If you don't respond, or perhaps you aren't able to, then the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Now the setup also includes a distance alert system which warns the driver if he or she is getting too close to the vehicle in front. Now if you don't respond and a collision seems imminent then the active safety brake functionality will be activated automatically. 
Also now standard on all Berlingo models is active lane keeping assistance, which works on the highway to sense if you're drifting out of your lane and applies subtle steering to get the car back to where it should be. And you get speed limit recognition, which alerts you if you go over the legal limit. As for other more conventional safety features, well, not before time. Every version of this mid-sized Citroen van-based MPV gets uh, twin side and curtain airbags, as well as twin front bags. Plus, there's ESP stability control, the usual ABS braking system with EBD, electronic brake force distribution, to make it more effective, and EBA, emergency brake assistance, to help in panic stops. And those will be advertised to following motorists by automatically activating hazard warning lights. Uh, ice fix charge seat fastenings, um, tire pressure monitoring, anti-whiplash front head restraints, an exterior temperature ice warning light and hill start assist to stop you drifting backwards on uphill junctions also make the team sheet right across the range. Uh, if you specify the optional tow bar, you'll also get a trailer sway mitigation system too. And beyond that, well, at the top of the range, flare buyers also get some extra options when it comes to safety. Uh, arguably the most important one is the Safety Plus pack, which includes three further camera-driven features, traffic sign recognition, pictures speed signs as you pass them and displays them on the dash. Intelligent beam headlights will automatically dip themselves at night in the face of oncoming traffic. And a driver attention monitoring system uh, will keep an eye on your reactions for signs of drowsiness and if necessary it will prompt you to stop for a restorative coffee. Uh, the alternative drive assist pack includes all those safety plus pack features and adds to them an adaptive cruise control system. Now that will automatically keep this car a safe distance behind vehicles in front on the highway and it'll seamlessly slow the car down if you come across a tailback. In fact, it can slow you right down to a stop and then automatically start you off again if you have an auto gearbox model. If you are a Flare customer, you'll also be offered the option of a Vizio Park One Pack, which provides a blind spot monitoring system, which alerts you if you're about to pull out when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. Plus that Vizio Park One Pack also bundles in a 180 degree color reversing camera and all round parking sensors, which includes a useful system called Flank Guard, which comprises of a series of sensors along the side of the vehicle that alert you to objects that might not have been spotted such as bollards and car parks. Now the alternative park assist pack gives you all the features in that Vizio One Pack together with a park assist system which will automatically steer you into spaces. So let's say you've bought this sensible French people carrier, you've wisely ticked the boxes for the important optional features, and you're now wondering whether you've made a sound financial choice. Well, let's help to put your mind at ease. Firstly, a little perspective. This is a relatively inexpensive car, so straight away you're limiting your financial exposure. And secondly, it's reassuring to know that residual values on this third generation model are expected to be very reasonable. Uh, take the typical M body shape, flare spec, blue HDI 130 diesel variant that we're trying here for instance. After three years and 60,000 miles, industry experts reckon that it would retain 34.3% of its new value. That's really pretty good for a vehicle of this type. This Mark III model's second generation Berlingo predecessor had a smattering of Citroen's modern era engine technology, but from a petrol perspective at least, much of it tended to be fitted to variants a lot of potential buyers couldn't afford. That's no longer the case. Gone are the relatively old tech VTI units that cheaper versions of older Berlingos had to soldier on with. Instead, right from the starting point in this Berlingo range, buyers get this French brand's class leading the efficient three-cylinder 1.2 litre pure tech technology and the potential for regular green pump fuel returns of over 50 miles per gallon. 
To be specific, an entry-level 1.2-litre PureTech petrol 110 horsepower Berlingo manages 51.4 mpg on the combined cycle and 125 grams per kilometre of CO2. That might give you pause for thought if you were automatically gravitating towards a diesel. If nothing but black pump fuel motoring will do though, then predictably your most efficient option is to choose the base Blue HDI 75 variant and that manages 68.9 mpg on the combined cycle and 108 grams per kilometre of CO2. It's more likely though you will be considering the perkier Blue HDI 100 or Blue HDI 130 derivatives that we'd recommend, both of which uh, return near identical figures, 65.7 mpg and around 112 grams per kilometre. Impressively, specifying the Blue HDI 130 version with Citroen's E88 automatic transmission has no impact whatsoever on those readings. All this means that these volume diesel variants attract a relatively low 27% benefiting kind taxation rate for business users and an annual VED charge of £140 following a £165 figure applicable for the first year of registration. As you'd expect, all the engines come with the brand's usual SNS stop and start system fitted as standard, plus there's a gear efficiency indicator to tell the driver uh, which is the best cog to be in to use the least fuel. Keep an eye on this and drive with frugality as a priority and you should be able to eke out an impressive range from a fuel tank which is for some reason much larger in the petrol variants than it is with the diesels, 61 litres as opposed to 50 litres. So how have the PSA Group engineers been able to achieve such a strong efficiency showing with the engines across the range? Well, with the PureTech petrol units, the answer lies in reduced weight and an emphasis on reducing uh, mechanical losses due to friction. Uh, if you switch your attention to Citroen's Blue HDI diesel technology, well, the answer there lies in a clever three-step after-treatment system that's designed to better eliminate the four nasty pollutants that diesel units usually put out. Uh, those are namely unbud hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxides and particulates. The first stage sees the unwanted hydrocarbon and carbon monoxide elements converted into harmless water and carbon dioxide. In the second stage that nasty nitrogen oxide also gets converted into water via a selective catalytic reduction process using a urea and water mixture called AdBlue, although you'll need to get the 17 litre tank that holds that mixture topped up every 12,500 miles. And finally in the third step a particulate emissions filter eliminates virtually all particulates at a stroke. Of course, you'll have to do your bit as a driver in order to get anywhere near the published fuel figures. Uh, to help you, the Centerdash Infotainment Screen's Trip Computer section gives you readouts for current fuel consumption and remaining range. Plus, it'll tell you how long the stop and start system has been functional for on any given trip. Although, uh, actually, we're not quite sure where you'd ever want to know that. The screen between the instrument dials includes a graphic which shows the extent to which you're uh, braking or accelerating. And on the 8-inch Center Dash infotainment screen, you'll also find a theoretically useful eco-coaching segment, which includes a so-called histogram section, which grades your driving for acceleration, braking and smoothness, and awards you a star rating out of five for every day of the week you're in. You can also opt to get some general advice driving tips, although personally we wouldn't because most of the provided observations seem to be blindingly obvious. Things like um, try to drive smoothly and accelerate moderately. What else might you need to know? Um, expect insurance groups to be in the same ballpark as the previous model. Uh, the least you'll pay is for the Blue HDI 75 diesel derivative. That's rated at Group 8E. The Blue HDI 100 variant is rated at Group 11E. And this Blue HDI 130 model is rated at Group 14E. For the 1.2 litre 100 horsepower petrol model, you're looking at Group 10E or 11E, depending on which of the two spec options you choose. Maintenance costs, including spares, repairs and servicing, are likely to be low and that's a welcome legacy of this model's commercial ancestry. Regular service intervals come around every 20,000 miles or 12 months, depending on which comes sooner. And various prepaid servicing plans are available and they cover you for either 3 years and 30,000 miles, 4 years and 40,000 miles or 5 years and 50,000 miles. 
Finally, there's the usual three-year, 60,000-mile warranty, including a year of Europe-wide roadside assistance. The first two years of that aren't subject to any mileage limits, uh, but the third year, which is taken care of by your local dealer, is limited to 60,000 miles. Looking at the longer term, you also have a 12-year guarantee against rust and 36 months cover for any paintwork defects, although that doesn't include stone chips and other wear and tear damage. Back at the turn of the century, the original version of this Berlingo established a template for the modern van-based mid-sized MPV. You could argue that this much improved third generation design still does. It is certainly a more sophisticated thing than its predecessors, but despite all that, something of the original model's charm remains. Like a faithful family hound, it isn't flashy, it can be a little agricultural in its manners, but it'll never let you down. Plus, it's as astonishingly practical as ever. Building on these virtues, this Mark III model sets out to add a little pedigree to the breed, and in doing so, changes the rules quite significantly, positioning this contender as a more desirable family accoutrement. Spend enough on this new generation version, uh, getting yourself a variant like the one that we've been testing here, and it can be as smart, safe, and high-tech as you could reasonably want such a practical vehicle to be. Even in its entry-level form, this car has more style and certainly more equipment than base versions of its Peugeot Rifter and Vauxhall Combo Life design stablemates. The fact that it's also slightly cheaper than its key segment rivals might be enough to seal the deal. Well, at least if you're convinced that a mid-sized van-based MPV like this one is the right route to take. Most family buyers, of course, aren't, and they'll probably still end up paying more for a conventional car-like MPV, or more likely, a space-compromised, less efficient, small or mid-sized SUV. Their loss. In fact, we're actually rather attracted by the way that in this more modern form, this Berlingo has become more visually appealing without in any way bothering to hide its commercial vehicle ancestry. On the contrary, in many ways, this model celebrates that, as you will the very first time you realize that awkward items like bikes, kayaks, and chunky pieces of furniture that you'd huff and puff to get into an ordinary mid-sized MPV or SUV will slide into this Citroen without the need to break a sweat. Now true, some models like those will drive better than a converted LCV like this, and of course, they'll look a bit sleeker, but for committed Berlingo buyers, that really won't matter. In summary then, if you add up the things you actually need for school run, annual holiday, gym kit, and town commuting family transport, a van-orientated MPV like this simply makes more sense than anything else. And amongst cars of this genre, we think this Citroen will be for many the most sensible and appealing option from amongst the various models available, especially if you opt for the alternative lengthier seven-seat body style. Now, if that Berlingo can be presented with a modicum of style in the way that this top flare specified variant has been, then so much the better. Now, true, it may not be the car that you and your tribe always dreamed of owning, but it may well be the one that you actually need. <laughs>